Of all the discoveries made by the Homo genus throughout the course of its around 4 million years of existence, perhaps none is as useful, yet deadly, as the harnessing of fire. Fire, that beautiful, flickering, yet terrifying element, is used to cook our food, to heat our homes, to power our machinery. We use it in our art, our celebrations, for light and for decoration. But there are two sides to every coin, and fire has become a staple in human weaponry, a tool of killing. Fires, when uncontrolled or unexpected, can be disastrous, burning our homes and cities at the drop of a hat. And yet, if it wasn't for the discovery of controlled fire, we would not be where we are today from a technological standpoint. Today, we will be looking at how our early human ancestors discovered how to control and utilize this wildest of elements for their personal use. It is a tale key to the story of mankind. Without it, things would have been very different indeed. We call it a discovery, but fire was very much already discovered by life on Earth that existed almost half a billion years prior to our ancestors. Natural fires have in fact been occurring on the surface of our planet for over 420 million years. Our ancestors simply learned to control it. Evidence of charcoal in Silurian rock deposits have shown that vegetation on land combusted and burned when the conditions were right. And this has been continuing across the fossil record as the atmosphere and plant biodiversity fluctuated over deep time. It is somewhat of a case of right time, right place for our earliest fire-wielding ancestors. Throughout the Pleistocene epoch of the late Cenozoic era, grasslands were rife across much of the world, including the mighty, expansive savannas of sub-Saharan Africa. Fires across these tall, dry grasses were common, but didn't occur to any major detriment to the environment. The savannas relied on fires to stay as savannas. If it wasn't for the constant burning and regrowing, the regions could have steadily developed into scrubland, forcing its animal inhabitants to adapt or die. Our early ancestors, apes, australopithecines, and early members of the genus Homo would have frequently observed these deadly wildfires tearing across their open landscape. And once they learned that fires could not only kill, but char the vegetation and animal life in its wake, it is possible that they began to follow it. As our ancestors followed the fire, they may have collected the corpses and plant matter burnt up in the flames, which would have saved a lot of energy that would otherwise been taken up by hunting. What's more is that animals fleeing the fire could have been cornered and killed without having to chase them. Antelope, for example, running in the opposite direction to the perceived danger, could have been intercepted and killed by members of a troop encircling and following the blaze. It wasn't until one and a half million years ago that our ancestors began to interact with the flames directly. Scientists can often only speculate on the exact events that took place here. But these primitive men and women may have noticed that some substances burned slower than others, purposefully throwing them onto wildfires to extend the duration of the blaze, keeping the fire alive for longer. Dry vegetation and dung were likely used in order to scare off predators or rival groups of humans. This fire would have continuously provided heat and light in addition to food. The smoke coughed up by the fire would also have been useful in keeping away irritating biting insects such as flies and mosquitoes, meaning that our ancestors could wander the plains in relative peace so long as they stayed out of the harm's reach of the fire themselves. As for the exact moment, humans were able to specifically start their own fire, 
scientists can again only speculate. It is incredibly difficult to pinpoint the first ancient campsite or hearth, but several sites in the Middle East and Southern Africa may hold the key. Specifically, the Kesem Cave in Israel and Vundervert Cave in South Africa's expansive Northern Cape Province. The Israel sites are much younger and show repeated use of the same fire, as well as evidence of cooked meat. How exactly were these fires formed though? As our early ancestors began to notice which materials burned slower, it is likely that they were gathered and stored to use in specific situations. Two pieces of flint, rubbed together in quick action, were used to start the fire famously. Around the time fire was discovered, flint was used to create weapons and tools, so many individuals would have been in situations where they were observing sparks fly out of the flint as it was struck by another piece. Perhaps they likened the sparks to the look of fire, or perhaps it was a convenient accident. But through putting two and two together, these early people were able to harness the power of fire for themselves. It would have taken much trial and error, and it's likely a lot of complications put themselves in the way of the process. But before too long, our ancestors were specifically using slow burning material to feed a fire, keeping it going throughout the night to provide light, warmth, and ultimately cooked food. The subsequent impacts of the controlling of fire are near endless. Firstly, humans would have gathered in locations where repeatedly burned fires were lit. Groups from across the lands may have joined together to live in areas that could be kept warm and bright to protect themselves against the terrifying predators, wolves, bears, and big cats that lurked in the murk of the night. The means of keeping an area light for extended periods of time beyond the fall of the sun led to the sleep schedules of these early people changing. People would gather around the fires to socialize, forming lasting friendships and relationships, communicating vocally with one another in a method which would have led to ancient languages. As humans sat around the fire to socialize on an evening, their language would have allowed them to pass down stories of their ancestors. Perhaps significant individuals were discussed, such as brave hunters, skilled craftsmen, or respected healers. These early conversations, made permissible by the presence of fire, would have led to the advent of culture, perhaps even religions and legends, when the stories were passed down to later generations. Art is included in this category also. As humans learned to light up the caves they called home, they would have also been able to see well enough to begin painting on the rock walls of their settlements. This would have led to the very first cave paintings, a movement which likely started the art of drawing as we know it. The reconstructions of ancient life shown in these videos would not be possible if it wasn't for the harnessing of fire all those years ago. In areas that reused their campfires, permanent settlements may have popped up, leading to the very earliest communes or villages. People would have joined these settlements from the outside, allowing them to expand, leading to the very first proto-communities popping up around the globe. Not only that, but the people living in these communities would have been able to broaden their horizons in terms of their diets. Cooked food would have tasted better than the raw meat previously eaten by humans without access to fire, and more experimentation with food and diet would have led to a diverse range of items being eaten, leading to the world's first regional cuisines as fire harnessing communities popped up in different areas of the world. Cooking food also eliminates potentially harmful bacteria residing in raw meat, meaning that our ancestors could have had access to a healthier, germ-free form of nutrition. Ultimately, this would have played a major part 
in the lengthening of life expectancies, which would have served to enhance all aspects of civilization advancement. Fire could now also be used as a deadly weapon. Through tipping arrows and spears in dry, slow-burning materials, early hunters or warriors would have been able to set their arrows and spears ablaze, which would have proved invaluable in hunts and raids. Controlled fires could be lit to coax animals out of hiding. Fire would have also been used to kill larger animals more quickly, and early settlements and forts could have been set ablaze, causing destruction on levels previously untold in the natural world. The use of fire in this way would have played a part in the formation of the first major conflicts and wars, and fire is often used, even in its purest form, as a weapon today. The advent of our controlling of fire would have ultimately played a huge part in the development of our brains. As we continued to learn from the use of fire, our ancestors would have progressed technologically. Natural selection would have taken its course, and the communities with access to fire would have persisted above those that did not. Fast forward to where we are today, and it's rare to come across something man-made, which hasn't in some way been impacted by fire. It's so common that it's easy to forget how deadly this element is. There's no doubt that some of our earliest ancestors would have succumbed to the dangers of fire, but it is also ultimately a force that humanity could not have done without in its progression to civilization.